We Happy Few is a game about floating cardboard boxes in the sky. Okay, okay, let me stop for a second. I know many of my attempting to play episodes have quickly devolved to a general complainathon. Complainathons, also known as subreddits, have become much more prevalent in the age of digital media. But on this episode, I don't just want to complain about a game. No, I want to answer a question I posed to myself while playing. Can a game be junk food? Like by all accounts, We Happy Few is a hot mess. And it's not just technical issues or graphical glitches, it's not just missing audio or texture pop-ins. Ollie, it's Arthur! Well, why didn't you see that before? Lovely day for it. Did you see? It's big things like quest lines I couldn't complete, terrible AI, and all the times my game just simply shut down after freezing. There you are. All right. It's repetitive character models and voiceovers. Seems a bit light for marble. Say goodnight! I'll finish you down up! I won't have it! No need to get excited after all. It's the broken systems like taking joy. Something Compulsion Games goes to great lengths to explain has negative side effects and can lead to memory loss or overdosing if used too frequently. But you can basically avoid using joy altogether by making hundreds of sunshine pills which have no negative side effects and can be easily crafted. Or you could just disable joy detectors, or run around checkpoints. And note, this is a big mechanic in the game, a mechanic that is directly tied to the storyline. Where do you think you're going? This is a municipal work site, and you're not a municipal worker, are you? Huh? So clear off! Or the system of wearing different outfits so people don't try to kill you. It just forces you to stop and equip a new suit as you enter different areas in a game of Inventory Management Hero. Well, send me to help out. Oh, and I suppose you learned all about municipal infrastructure back at Central. It's the survival aspect, which doesn't come into play much outside of the bonuses you receive for eating, drinking, and sleeping. You never die because of these factors, you just suffer penalties. And even that's kind of pointless as the game drops you into a sea of berry bushes and clean water taps at the front that keep you well fed and hydrated from the start. It's the stealth aspect, which becomes implausibly easy once you've taken the right perks and crafted a sneaking suit and shoes. You can run up to people and knock them out. Of course, because of technical issues, you may come back minutes later to find the person you knocked unconscious has now died somehow. Okay, okay, I said this wasn't going to be the Complain Olympics. Got that out of my system. The point is, I played this game for so long. We Happy Few is not a short game, and Arthur Hastings' storyline is ample on its own. And when I finished it, I realized there were two other chapters to complete. I didn't do that because the game also took away all my equipment, my vast stash of supplies, and all my perks, so no, 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 let's not go down that rabbit hole. What I mean is, I played for long stretches of time in this game, exploring every house, raiding every trash can, seeking out every side quest, even the broken ones. No bad, Nathan. Bad. Stop. Come out. Come out, wherever you are. There you are. Do you remember when we used to swim in the river? I don't. So, if you can recognize a game is bad, but you keep playing it anyways, what does that mean? Because there have been other games that ended up in this field of study. I played Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet for countless hours, absorbed in grinding through the same areas over and over again to increase my levels and get special equipment. 
Yet the characters were boring, the gameplay was repetitive, the story was head-scratching, and the overall point seemed to be that grinding to the next level, rinse, repeat. And if we're being honest, I could have just as easily played Final Fantasy XV, another JRPG with real-time combat and endless leveling that succeeds in many of the aspects where Fatal Bullet failed. Or I could talk about Kingdom Come Deliverance, or as I think of it, Skyrim for history buffs. So many things that Skyrim did to speed up travel, minimize downtime, encourage exploration, and simplify combat were thrown out for Kingdom Come in favor of frustrating realism while preserving all the wonderful bugs. And I realized I've done this so many times. I relentlessly play a game when I know a superior one is out there already. Titan Quest? Could just play Diablo. Conan Exiles? You'd have more fun with Minecraft. No Man's Sky? I don't know. Subnautica, maybe? They have some real similarities, but anyways, that's beside the point. So, let's see if I can verbalize my thought process when approaching a new game. First, I get an initial impression. What is it trying to be? Second, I think about how the game works mechanically. What is it going to be? Third, I look for what makes the game unique. What does it do differently? Fourth, I contemplate how well the game executed all of it. Did it succeed? Finally, I think about my experience. Did I enjoy it? Because as the end user, that's kind of the point. And many times that last question can be co-opted by overanalyzing games. But it also leads us back to that term of junk food games. You know they're bad for you and eat up time you could be spending on more enjoyable games, but you just keep playing them regardless. So let's ask those questions of We Happy Few. What is it trying to be? An alternate history version of 1960s England. What is it going to be? A stealth slash survival game where my goal is to get out of town. What does it do differently? Aesthetics. The game world and concept are completely original. Also, it shows how Canadians view England. You have come to the opposite place, but I'm afraid it is not the opposite time. Did it succeed? Not under most definitions of succeed. Did I enjoy it? Well, enough to keep playing it. And that's the point. If a game can hook you just enough to keep you going, hoping that there's a payoff in the end, that it will get better, that you can find the fun if you really try, then play for hours on end you shall. But once our brain determines that we are not the happy few experiencing that game, we shut it down. Only then do we ask if another game is superior. Why did I play We Happy Few when I could have just played... I don't know... We Happy None? <laughs> but I haven't played Fallout 76 yet, so... No! Bad Nathan. Bad. You go to your corner and you think about what you did. It's not personal. Oh, they're going to keep singing. Okay. I don't feel very stealthy while they're singing. Okay. Let's just see. Alright. Just go sleepy times. Okay. Yeah, that song's not going to get tiresome. Oh, did you see me? Nope! Okay. I... What the... I didn't... Okay, apparently... You're dead. I don't know how that happened.